This video is on Satan. Satan had it all. He was created, he was a musical being. God actually created him with musical instruments inside of his body. He was the favorite angel, the most beautiful of the angels. And God loved him so much. He decided it wasn't enough. He wanted to be God himself. He decided that he deserved to be, to run the show. And you, you can't do that. Come on. God has been there forever. God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit have been there forever. Human beings, we can't wrap our little pea brains around that. But it's a fact. God's always been. He always will be. And Satan couldn't stay there. So God had to cast him down from heaven. And a third of the angels went with him who were bad angels who wanted to follow him and try to fight God and the good angels. Insane. I, I, you know, Satan's evil. He's got a lot of power. He can't touch Jesus, but he's not very smart in a lot of ways. So anyways, he's cast down. And, you know, he, he tempts Eve in the Garden of Eden and gets her to taste the fruit. And then Adam wins that battle and decides, well, you know, I've just, I've won. But no, he didn't win anything. He's trying to break the lineage, the bloodline that leads to Jesus Christ and couldn't do it. Then he figured he'd, his wicked angels would come on down and they would pollute the, the gene pool. And, and uh, through, I think, through possessing wicked men, who most of the earth was wicked anyways, except for Noah's family, who would uh, have babies with human women and, and then with animals and pervert the gene pool. And then he thought he won there. No, he didn't win. God spared Noah and his family a pure gene pool. Went through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He figured he would just get Herod to destroy all the babies. And so Jesus couldn't be born. But guess what? Jesus was born. And then he figured when Jesus died on the cross that he had it made and the battle was won. But Jesus was risen again on the third day. He just doesn't win. But you know, Satan's a powerful adversary. He's very, very smart. And his demons, some of his demons are are chained in hell right now, in the bottom of hell, waiting for the great white throne judgment when they're all cast in the lake of fire. But some of his ranking demons, some of his main demons, are patrolling the earth. They have been for all these centuries and, and millennia. And they're out there just wrecking stuff. I believe Washington, D.C. has a main demon. And New Orleans and San Francisco in Haiti and all these wicked places and most people don't a lot well not most but some people may not know that hell was created for these uh, wicked angels but some are still running loose and running wild and there's still Nephilim out there right now perverting you know test tube human and animal hybrids and fake animals fake humans I think fake humans are walking among us right now but Satan knows he can't pollute the gene pool his big thing right now is he wants to, in what he's been doing since Jesus Christ died and was risen again, is just trying to take as many, <coughs> excuse me, to hell with him as he can. And he loves taking Christians to hell. If you think about the time all of the people who have lived since the days of Noah, there must be, it's estimated there was a, about 7 billion people on the earth during the days of Noah, which is what we have right now. If you project through time, man, there could be, there could be, 100 billion people dead in the ground right now with their spirits either in heaven or in hell. And I believe the majority of those by far, without a doubt, are in hell. In the early days, of course, there were a lot more in heaven, but man has been digressing and Satan has been winning more and more battles because he is the God, little g, of the air and the God, little g, of the earth. And he roams around like a fierce lion, lion roaring, trying to seek who he can devour. And people who take him lightly are just stupid. Okay, they're really, really dumb. Because he's slick. This is Satan's favorite thing. I always talk about this a lot. I'm sure you've probably heard it or you've read it on my Facebook page if you're a friend. Satan likes to sneak in through the back door. He likes to get a toehold. Then get his foot in. Maybe his ankle. Then maybe his calf. Maybe his knee. Then his thigh. Then his hip. Then half his body. And then his whole body. And by then, he's already got you, my friend. And he's very, very sneaky. He loves to get fellow Christians, Christians, to come and attack you and try to, to destroy your ministry, try to, to destroy your joy, take away the joy of the rapture, for instance. Uh, there's so many Christians that, that teach that the rapture won't be until after the tribulation, everybody's going to die or, you know, have to hide out somewhere. And, and then, uh, you know, it, and which is, I used to believe that too, until I started reading the Bible through the Holy Spirit's eyes and he showed me the truth. And I understand that the Bible is 100% clear, crystal clear, that the rapture is pre-tribulation. 
and again that's another topic I might go through that I wrote a long note on that and I might go through that one time on a video it might be worth it to do see what, where the Holy Spirit leads me I only teach what he wants me to teach but the, uh, the my point is a lot of Christians think well you know if I'm not gonna if I have to go through the tribulation what's the sense of me being in a hurry right now to serve Jesus I can just backslide or do something else or not really be too concerned about it or they're afraid their joy is stolen because they expect it to be raptured and that's a very dangerous thing my friends because it can really really have people not prepared because when the rapture happens like that twinkling of an eye Jesus says if you're not ready you're left behind and woe unto you seven years of hell like no one's ever even imagined but even that hell will be like vacation and paradise compared to the eternal hell that's coming but that's what Satan does. You know, he uses Christians to attack other Christians, to try to steal your joy, to lie to you. He loves to get people to lie, cheat, and steal. He loves to get he loves to get you to surf the internet looking at pornography. He loves to get you to cheat on your wife or your husband. He loves to get you to have premarital sex. He loves to get you to gamble, to take drugs, to be an alcoholic. He loves to get you to hate Israel. He loves to get you to be a homosexual. Or to support homosexuality he loves to to get you to want to change your sex because you weren't born this way according to you and to lady gaga she says she was born this way you know everybody thinks they're born a certain way and they want to change how they are baloney you know god made you the way you are just like this chaz bono that's called chaz her name is chastity chastity bono she was born a woman she's a woman and she'll die a woman you can't change your sex you can't you can have a million operations you are who you are. But see, that's what Satan does. He tries to get everyone. He tries to pervert everything that God has made holy and pure. He doesn't want anything good. And the thing about Satan is, he hates you. Even when he gets you in his clutches, if you serve him, I mean, if you're like Satan's right-hand man, if you're his main man that's just the most evil human in the world, he still hates your guts. Man, he, he'll kill you in a heartbeat because he hates you. He hates human beings. Human beings are created in the image of God. The one he wanted to be and couldn't be and got kicked out of heaven from he hates humans, all of us. He especially hates Christians because we're not just created in the image of God. We live for God and try to, to emulate his son, Jesus Christ, to live like him. And when Satan can take Christians to hell, man, he has a huge party. And right now, he's having a mega party, man. He's making reservations in hell. He's, he's getting whole, whole floors blocked off like a big convention is coming to hell. A convention of once saved, always saved Christians who just believe all the lies that all you have to do is just ask Jesus Christ to forgive you of your sins one time. After that, do whatever you want to do, and you'll go to heaven. Satan, this is his biggest lie. It used to be a little, a few Baptists in the old days used to do it, but now, man, it's the biggest lie. It is just, it's horrendous. And just think about it. Think about this. Let's say that you're a Christian, and let's say that you are saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, and you end up being baptized filled with the holy spirit you end up you know going out as a missionary and saving lots of you know leading lots of people to to christ and pointing them to the cross let's say 10 20 years down the road you decide you know i want to i want to get into pornography and i want to start cheating on my wife and i want to serve satan i don't want to serve jesus anymore i want to be a satanist and so you decide to serve satan and leave god the once saved always saved crowd will tell you that one you're still going to heaven even though you're a Satanist because you were saved at one time. Or two, they'll tell you that, well, you weren't really saved, which is baloney. This person's lived for Christ for 10, 15, 20 years. And even if he only lived for Christ for a day, Jesus Christ says in his own words, I end all my videos with this, that all who come to me and ask shall be saved. All, not a few, not some, not most, every single one. So if you say that someone is not really saved, if they backslide, you're calling God a liar. You're calling Jesus Christ a liar. You're calling the Holy Bible a book of lies. Do you realize that? Can your brain just absorb that and comprehend it? Or are you just too dumb and arrogant to understand it? I just can't, you know, I can't believe the once saved, always saved. But that's Satan's biggest lie. It's the lie from hell. Satan's laughing his butt off at once saved, always saved. It's just terrible. But that's what he does. He teaches universalism. Gets people like Rob Bell to get out there and lie to millions. He teaches... The uh, prosperity doctrine, you know, that um, and he teaches that Jesus, his, his disciples, apostles, all the great prophets of old, that they all weren't living for God the right way because none of them were rich. None of them had a lot of homes, nice clothing and nice jewelry. And Paul was had a thorn in his side and couldn't be healed. So none of them were living for God the right way. 
what a bunch of baloney. See, they don't think, they, they don't think with their false doctrines and, and prophecies how they're putting God down, how they're calling God a liar, calling the Holy Bible a book of lies. Because Satan has them buffaloed. He has them by the throat. They don't even know it. He's down inside their soul. He's got them covered. The Holy Spirit left town a long time ago. The Holy Spirit's not going to live in a filthy, sin-ridden vessel. You know, it's not going to happen. And one time I'm going to do, I did a once save, double save video, but one time I'll break out this link that the Holy Spirit leads of by a guy named, I think his name is Don Corn, Corner or Don Cormer, and he really covers once saved, always saved well. I can go through a whole lot of the hundreds of scripture as much as I can in 15 minutes. It'll, it won't be enough, but I can give you an idea. But the bottom line is, Satan is there to get you. And when Satan tries to come mess with you, rebuke him. Say, Satan, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus, and I command you to get behind me. And he, he'll run. And you know what Satan hates more than anything? He hates to hear Jesus' name. So sometimes he comes around, and he tries to attack me all the time. I'll just start saying, Jesus, 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 Jesus. I'll say Jesus' name a thousand times. Oh, he hates that. He runs away. He can't He can't be around it. Because Satan is a liar. But don't miss, don't, you know, don't judge him as being weak or a wimp. Don't underestimate him because if you do, he'll get you. But if you use Jesus Christ as your sword and shield and your protection, he don't stand a chance. He can't touch Jesus. And he knows that. So his time is short. He knows that he don't know again. No one knows but God the day and the hour, but Satan knows it's getting ready to be showtime for him. His right-hand man, the Antichrist, who's going to be possessed by Satan himself, Satan incarnate. It's like Jesus was God incarnate walking the earth. The Antichrist will be Satan incarnate. He'll have his false holy trinity with him. He's just trying to mock. He'll, he's going to make everybody think he's Jesus. He's going, to be, he's going to be so terrible. You don't want to be any part of that. Get right with Jesus Christ now. If you're backslidden, believing once saved, always saved. If you have unconfessed sin and iniquities in your life, get rid of it now. If you've never been saved, come to Jesus right now. If you are saved and living right for the Lord, get out in the fields and reap the harvest. Our time is short. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray that people understand Satan's ways, understand his wicked, sneaky ways, evil ways, and to just learn to recognize him when he does this kind of stuff and learn to rebuke him in the name of Jesus. If we don't rebuke him in the name of Jesus, it don't matter. He don't listen to us, but Jesus, he fears. All throughout the Bible, when the, Jesus, when the demons saw Jesus, they, they ran in fear. They wanted nothing to do with them. They, they even asked him, you know, why are you coming to torment us now, Jesus, before, before your time? And when he met them at, at the, outside the graveyard, and they asked to go on the pigs, and he ran over the cliff. Everybody knows Jesus. And if you say Jesus' name and rebuke Satan in Jesus' name, Satan will run away. He'll scurry away like a cockroach when you turn the lights on. It's time to get real. It's time to get right. It's time to be holy, to serve the Lord, to come back to the Lord if we're backslidden, to come to the Lord if we've never known him as Lord and Savior. It's time to get out and reap the harvest if we live for Jesus Christ the way we're supposed to, if our house is clean and in order. Our time is short, my friends. Share this video with as many as possible. Get the word out and let's get serious and, and let's learn to recognize our enemy and learn to know how to defeat him through the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. As always, my friends, if you're watching this video and you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, pray this prayer with me. To Jesus, I know I've sinned. I know I've done wrong. I've done bad things and I'm sorry. I believe you came to this earth. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. I believe you're risen again on the third day, went back to heaven to the right hand side of God the Father. And since then, you've been preparing a place in heaven forever for all Christians. Please forgive me of my sins. Clean my heart out. Come live in my heart. Make me a new creature in Christ. Make me a child of the King. In your precious name I ask it. Amen. If you pray this prayer, Jesus says, everyone that asks, every single one, that comes to me and asks, will be saved. If you'd rather pray with someone else, send me a personal message in inbox. I'll give you my number. You can call me. I'd love to talk to you. I do it all the time on Facebook and elsewhere. If you have a lost loved one or neighbor or friend who doesn't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, if you are sick, have a sick friend, neighbor, or loved one, if you have a sick pet, if you need a job, car, home, if you need food, clothing, water, whatever it is, Send me an inbox or a message. I'd love to pray with you. I pray all the time. It's my honor to pray. I, I, I live to pray. I prayed for and received the gift of faith. And I have mustard seed faith. And when I pray, I pray believing in my heart, speaking with my mouth, knowing for a fact, 100%, that God will answer all my prayers so long as they're within his holy will. And my friends, he'll do the same thing for you. Trust him. Test him. His word never returns empty. His word is always 100% true. Once again, <laughs> running short on time. But hey, share this video with as many as possible. Get the word out. And I love you guys. And I pray that God would bless you. Thank you. Good night.